threatened because of increased expenditure. They come from all over the world, but they're all pursuing the same goal. These doctors, teachers, researchers, and administrators want to improve health care for the people back home. They're at Heidelberg University taking part in a year-long master's program in international health. One of the things the graduate students learn is that to solve health care problems in their own countries, they first need to understand how to organize and finance concrete projects. At this meeting, they're presenting their thesis topics. I work with indigenous communities in Peru, in the Amazon, in Latin America. We have people working with disasters in Asia. We have people working with maternal health in Africa. So you get to learn a little bit about all around the world and you get to understand success stories and maybe use that in your own, in your own country. So that's just invaluable. To ensure that what their students learn will have an impact on the ground, the Institute in Heidelberg works together with governments, health authorities, and researchers from many nations. Liabel Walusuna and Sandra Gavalt have examined the medical care that expectant mothers and newborns receive in Kenya. So you see the way they are sharing the resuscity and examines the mother before. One big problem there is the lack of nurses in state-run hospitals. Uh, and remember because they face long hours under difficult conditions at home, many trained nurses choose to emigrate instead. So many patients, uh, that come. You see here we have uh, three mothers sharing a bed. Um, this is the c common situation in a public health facility. Uh, this is a postnatal ward when the mother delivers, each has their own baby on the same bed. So these are three mothers with three babies on one bed. Three patients and three babies sharing one bed. Yes. yes. Sandra Gavalt has looked at mortality and life-threatening complications among mothers and babies in three Kenyan hospitals. Her results show that the number of deaths that occur there every year could be reduced with simple measures, like an emergency generator. A steady power supply can save lives. When you have a woman who is HIV positive and who is giving birth and you have no light, and this woman, she has some, some sutures to be made, you need to suture the woman. You don't have light, how are you suturing? And most of the times you don't have gloves. So the doctors and the midwives, they are working with the patients that are bleeding, etc., that have wounds. You need to stitch the wounds, you don't have gloves, you don't have light, so what they do, they, new, new, they use their smartphones, their phones, to put light with the phone uh -huh, that they are able to do their work. A workshop held for program graduates is focusing on neglected tropical diseases. People to this participant set up a hospital for the poor in Myanmar. Now the group is looking at concepts aimed at a specific problem. What are the best ways to combat parasitic worm infestations in the region? How should health authorities be involved? Where will the money come from? Their studies are over, but their joint efforts to improve health care all over the world continue.